behalf of Dr. Rainer Adam, our uh, head of office for uh, uh, Eastern and uh, Southeast Europe, I say hello and welcome you here. We are hosts here in, uh, in Moldova. The Nauman Foundation is uh, in over 60 countries of the world, but we are even here in Moldova, starting with 2000 on the ground uh, with the with office. And uh, Sergio, we welcomed you yesterday, who is uh, new coming here. Sergio Bo uh, Bogian is our uh, local project coordinator for uh, Moldova. So if you have questions and need some inside information, ask uh, him rather than uh, me. But if you want to know about geopolitics and what is happening here, also me. Uh, during time we will have a little bit hurry uh, in a rush uh, then uh, I will close here my, my welcome and uh, I hope we have some productive days thank you thank, thank you very much Raima uh, I will do the opening the official opening of the 16th resource bank meeting right after the talk of Ingo Friedrich, who was the former vice president of the European Parliament. He is here with us with the European Economic Senate, with the European Taxpayers Organizations, with the, with the Bavarian Taxpayers, uh, with uh, the Conservatives, and with all those who also uh, defend individual freedom, entrepreneurial freedom, and who are caring for reforms that have to I can greet you very, very heartily and say thank you, Barbara, for your activity, your fight for social market economy. And this is my first little topic. What is the reason for the astonishing recovery of good old Europe after the Second World War? I think there are in, in special two reasons. One, that we are no more enemies. We are in Europe partners. We are friends. We are competition, but we are not enemies anymore. And the second reason is this market economy. And you know where I am tomorrow. They are the father of the social market economy. We Bavarians think we are important for everything. But in this case, it's true. Mr. Ludwig Erhard, he was the first with the social market economy. And he was born there where I am tomorrow. And I will greet him because he is not more still alive. Ladies and gentlemen, we must hope that the British, I would say, call it Brexit catastrophe, will finish soon and Europe can solve all the large problems. Challenge of China, Seidenstraße. Challenge, dear friends of the United States, we love America, but we have problems with some acute developments. I hope, I hope that the old friendship and the old successful cooperation with the states will go on for the next hundred years. We need the big partner on the other side of the ocean. The high jobless rate in South America for young persons. I hope that the outcome of the European elections, 26th of May, will give us the chance to go on with a good and rational policy. And last not least, we wish and hope a good development of Eastern Europe. We want that Eastern Europe will also have the chance to come up to a good economic 
development a good economic level. And second, we must very keen and be very cautious that this market economy will go on and that future decisions of the European Parliament, there will be a new, I hope not so big majority, that this new development, this political development, not will destroy the chances and the function of market economy. I think we don't need addition taxes. And I am now a little un, let's say, not so cautious. We need no new socialistic experiments. We need no more high debts of the states. We have enough debts. We need chances. We need an environment that private enterprises have the chance to develop. The private enterprises, they give the jobs. The private enterprise, it's not easy, it's complex, but this is the future of Europe. In this sense, I wish you a successful meeting. I wish you that especially our young ladies and young functioners and young entrepreneurs will have chances in our common European community. Thank you very much and good luck for all of you. Thanks. Safe trips. Oh, you're saying good. This was pretty fast. So, as you all know, the European Resource Bank meeting is about spontaneous order, and we are very flexible. It's uh, and usually we do not sit in classrooms like that, but uh, having our wonderful hosts here, uh, we of course uh, make use of their uh, location and their facilities. Uh, but this is why we are sitting here, like more or less. Um, students, uh, but uh, as I mentioned before, 16 years ago we started out in Gummersbach at the Naumann Foundation when Wolfgang Müller was still working there, um, and we started out thinking with our American fr friends from Atlas and from Heritage, what can we do that the European movement, the free market libertarian movement, can finally get started? And uh, thanks to Wolfgang, who was the host 18 years ago, um, back then in Gummersbach, we made the decision. Uh, it was in addition, we had Pierre Garello, who could not join us for this time, um, from IES Europe. Uh, we said, okay, let's just copy paste the successful program of Heritage and Atlas, who back then did the events in the US together, and say, okay, let's start the European Resource Bank. Of course, as you all know, libertarians are difficult to herd. It's easier to herd a, cra a crowd of cats than libertarians. Uh, but we managed, after one and a half years, to get the first event started in Borowitz, uh, which is in the middle of nowhere in the mountains. And uh, we were only 30 people, no, 40 people. And um, right now, the movement uh, in Europe has grown. And there is think tanks across the continent. Just with the Free Market Roadshow, we have over 120 partners. So you can imagine what has happened in those past 15, 16 years. And it's a privilege uh, that we have so many sponsors as well uh, who believe and share our cause and without their help. And it's, for example, the Kriebel Foundation. It's Americans for Tax Reform. It's the European Economic Senate, who we are partnering here with. It's uh, the Taxpayers Association of Europe. It's, uh, as I'm here, our local partners. And it's many people from the industry who actually do not want to be named, but who are contributing substantially to the entire, Euro to the entire movement. And without their help, it would not be possible to set up events and to coordinate things. And uh, it's also with great pleasure that the World Taxpayers Association Association once again has partnered with us and here I would like to just make a little remark. Uh, if you are free and if you have time, fly over to Sydney, Australia for their big international meeting. Uh, it's definitely worth it. Um, they are doing great work in, in the defense of not only the individual but also of the entrepreneurs uh, that we will not die of, over, or that we will not die overtaxed. Um, but without further ado, I would just simply uh, go through the program today. Uh, as as um, you already heard, we will have a Dragon's Den competition. And of course, I will not announce the Dragons yet because they 
are anonymous to some of you. Um, some of them you might know, but uh, at least it's worth it for those who compete uh, to do their best. And uh, many of those who have undergone this Dragon's Den competition are now think tank leaders in their respective countries and uh, have brought change and are not only as a think tank or as a group successful, but also as individuals. They are true leaders of the freedom movement. And uh, uh, we are proud that we have more and more uh, people joining uh, the, the competition. And for us, we have only, we, we picked or we had to pick eight finalists who will compete tonight um, in the competition after uh, His Serene Highness's speech, Prince Michael, who will uh, talk about the reforms that need to be taken and the debt trap that uh, and freedom versus equality. But before that, we will have um, two short panels, uh, one on digital economy that you all know that we have been working on for years and years and years, where we also set up some uh, letters and uh, that have been delivered not only to the United Nations, but to other big institutions where we tell them, hey guys, careful what you wish for, uh, look rather at numbers, facts and, uh, at facts and figures before you, before you make regulation or before you create regulation and laws. And uh, this is also a very good opportunity for all of us to coordinate that. And further, I would also like that um, Ignasi will do interviews again, as we did last year, because we can always use those for promotion of our ideas. And we will announce the room that he will use for the interviews uh, in the next break. And I will also indicate who, or everybody, actually is free to, of course, um, give a short statement on whatever is important. I say it's uh, the digital taxes that are being risen and uh, a couple of other issues that we will see also. Uh, the second short panel will be on innovative policy and, and health financing. And I'm glad that we could partner up with ATR on this issue. Um, after, after Prince Michael's keynote, bye bye. Thank you very much again. Bye. Uh, and good luck with the party day tomorrow. Party, really. Um, we will have um, a, a topic uh, on the global view on, on, on the perception and of intellectual property rights again. We had a big panel on IP in the morning with the students. The whole room was crowded with, with young people not knowing about what is going on on this front. And I'm glad that we have the the local, the, the real fighters for, for IP with us as well. After that, we will have Dragon's Den competition, and then finally the second break at 7, before we reunite at the Bristol for dinner at 7.30. And something that is probably also important for you for tomorrow, make sure you're also in slacks and jeans and whatever, very comfortable, because uh, our tour to Transnistria will immediately start uh, from here, so there will not be an opportunity to go back to the hotel and change. So come here relaxed, as uh, besides it's Saturday, and the think tankers are only uh, also cool people, um, not very formal sometimes. Um, so please be uh, our guests and partners from the European Economic Senate be with us uh, that we are more um, casual tomorrow. Uh, since Ludwig Eberhard was mentioned again, the person who kind of kicked off uh, the European economic miracle. I will also say, mention one second name, which was General Clay, who made sure that the price controls were, were cut. And this is also something that is important to us. No regulation, please, or at least uh, as least as possible. But now, without further ado, I would like to say thank you to all our partners, to everybody here who joins us, who took the effort not only from the US, but from Latin America, from Korea, from everywhere, and also, of course, from all parts of Europe to join us here and to discuss and debate and learn from each other and spread and expand our network, because this is what it is about, spread, expand, and exchange ideas. Um, the first panel um, will be on the digital economy and the new wave of taxations. And uh, Andreas, Andreas Hellmann, our partner from ATR, will chair and moderate it. And I will ask you right away, Andreas, to kick it off.